Hey everybody, it's Jay Bear from Convince and Convert. Hope you are doing great. Joined today by a very special guest, uh, Derek Halpern from SocialTriggers.com. Derek is the man when it comes to conversion rate optimization on blogs and websites. He is going to uh, diagnose and uh, slice and dice his way through Convince and Convert. He's going to make me cry on camera right here. Uh, and in so doing, he is going to teach all of us some extraordinarily important lessons about making sure that people actually do stuff on your website, not just look around. Derek, thanks very much for being here. I appreciate it. Hey, Jay, I'm really excited to be doing this because, one, I'm, I'm having the pleasure to work with you on this, which is going to be great. And two, I see on your site there's a lot of opportunities for improvement that most bloggers tend to have, even you know websites of all sizes. We're talking about sites that get you know hundreds of thousands of people a day will have these same opportunities because it's very easy to overlook some of these nuances of getting leads and sales out of your site, right? So I guess we're just going to dive right in and take it right to the top. Awesome. Uh, before we before we just get into some of the the tips, what are some of the main goals of convincingconvert.com? So uh, there's a few things that, that I ideally want people to do when they come to convinceandconvert.com. So one would be to visit my consulting page. Uh, it's right there, the second navigation item, Hype Free Social Media Consulting. That's certainly a goal. Also would want people to sign up for the uh, 321 uh, email newsletter, which goes out every Monday and Friday. Also want people to uh, subscribe to the blog uh, via RSS or email. You see that it says get blog posts by email uh, on the right-hand side. And then, of course, if people want to uh, purchase or learn more about uh, the book that I co-authored with Amber Nass on The Now Revolution, there's an opportunity for that as well. So like a lot of bloggers, uh, I think I've got a lot of things that I might possibly want people to do, and, and maybe there's too many of those things, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so cool. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page before we get started, and now we'll just dive in. So I like how you have your navigation. I like hype-free social media consulting, newsletter, free social media tools, etc. I like all that stuff. The one thing that I'm finding with a lot of blogs is, well, most blogs anyway, is blogs are great at highlighting all of your new content. But it's horrible at highlighting all that stuff you spent hours and hours and hours on creating in your archives. And some of that stuff in your archives really is evergreen stuff. Sure. So I've been recommending to a lot of people to create content buckets. Now these are not necessarily category pages. This instead are pages similar to like, you know, high free social media consulting or your newsletter page or something along those lines where you'll maybe have get started with social media marketing and then you'll have some content on that page and you'll link to maybe five or ten of your best articles that talk about getting started with social media marketing. Great. And these content buckets allow you to use the content you already have to create these cool looking resources that are really useful for new people visiting your site and it's really useful for existing people who already know about you but might want to reference some of your older stuff. So broader than a category, broader than a tag, um, but, but more sort of content that, that works together because it tells a similar story? Yeah, so I wouldn't say necessarily broader than a category or a tag, but a category or a tag tends to be one word, whereas these pages, unless you're working with a really top tier site, you're not going to rank for one word things. Yeah. So what I tend to do is create these pages around maybe two or three words. Like, yeah. you know, I'll have one on my site called building an email list or right. increasing online sales for you you could have you might want social media marketing 101 because or content marketing 101 because yeah. that's what you're known for yeah. but you want to maybe do something a little bit more broad than that and one of the ways you can do that to find ideas is to just go to the Google keyword tool and yeah. just see what people are searching for and come up with maybe a two or three word phrase Great. and and the goal of these pages would be to create maybe between three and five of these content buckets and these buckets will rank in search engines, these buckets will help people find new content and you can actually make these buckets convert people into emails too. And there's actually a, a little formula that I have for creating these pages and it's just simply, you know, step one, a nice persuasive headline at the top, step two, some nice introductory content, step three, maybe links to five to ten articles that you wrote. Step four, an opt-in form. 
So I guess that's four steps, not three steps. <laughs> and and what are they what are they opting in for at that point? All right. So with me, everything I do is about my email newsletter. I I know with you, you have a you have blog post by email and you have an email newsletter. I tend to I don't update my my personal site as much as you do. I think having the two separate options like you have works really good. And with your case, maybe opting into the blog post would be beneficial, but you have to decide what's more valuable to you. Is it the email opt-in or is it the blog post opt-in? And right. you should probably use whatever one you want okay. is the most valuable. Great. Now, yeah, I mean, for me, because the way, the way I do the, the blog post email is it just automatically fires out through FeedBurner when the blog post gets published. And so I don't have uh, or I don't take the opportunity to, to put links to a bunch of other stuff that I'm doing or appearances or webinars in, in the blog post email. So the one that really can be used for, for marketing is the, is the newsletter. So that's the more valuable asset to you. Then, I think right? so. Yeah. It's more useful. Cool. Cool. So I would definitely put the email newsletter at the bottom of those pages instead. And now I know you come from a conversion background. So here's some of the cool stuff with that is you'll be able to, I'm, I'm not sure how exact target works, but I'm sure they have this functionality where you can track, you can add tags to your form so you know where they, that which, which page, page yeah yeah so you'll be able to know which page or if you put you know one something on your social media marketing page uh, opt-in form you'll know that person opted in for your email newsletter on social media marketing and then you can start building these segments of your list yeah and you'll know you know when you have someone who opted in for social media marketing you might be able to hit them a little more aggressively yeah with some offers or potential pitches that you might not be able to hit other people with great so first step with convince and convert is create these content buckets and promote them. You know, you can link them in your sidebar, you can link them elsewhere, and we'll go through, you know, you can put them in the sidebar, maybe in your navigation, or you can find a new area for them. Would you do a, a second level of navigation, do you think, or does that get kind of confusing? Yeah, so second levels of navigation are interesting. Uh, the way your site's currently designed, I wouldn't recommend it because you'd have it stacked on yeah. your, you know, two navigation bars look a little weird. Yep. Whereas if your navigation was maybe on top and the buckets were on the bottom, that might work. Okay. You know, uh, Copy Blogger does it where they've got the main navigation to the right and then mm -hmm. the content buckets right below it. Yep. Okay. Smart. So, but you know, yeah, yeah, you have to decide where you where it makes sense for your particular design. Okay. All right. So let's go into the next step. Now, just a quick little tip. I know you're using the Hello Bar. Yeah. I've used the Hello Bar pretty extensively, and I noticed something really interesting. I always left my Hello Bar the same color for months. Every time I wait, you know, I wait a few months, left the Hello Bar the same color. Then one day I decided to just change the color, and click rate went up. Huh. Eventually, it, it went back down again, but I think that having your Hello Bar and thinking about the color that it is and just changing it once in a while could really... I didn't even change the message. I just changed the color and it increased the click rate. So think about changing that once okay. in a while. Okay. And, you're and, I, and I know they have A/B. I know they have A/B yeah. testing for the uh, for the pro version that you could actually measure that, right? Yeah, I think they just added that. Yeah. I, I I don't have much experience with that yet. All right, let's go to the next step. This is another issue that a lot of blogs tend to have, and it's all about the blog sidebar. You've got a very busy blog sidebar. It used to be busier. I tried to I tried to make it less I tried to put less stuff there. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. And I think we gotta we gotta pull that we gotta pull that back a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about with regards to your goals. Your main business is consulting and your main business is speaking. Right. You also want blog posts by email. Yeah. Now I like how you have consulting speech. I like the personal little bio there because it really helps you connect with people. So I think that's worth keeping. The Facebook page, I know you just launched like, what, a week ago? Yeah, something like that, two weeks. Now, I think having a Facebook page there is nice, but I would try to figure out a different place to work that in. And It takes up a lot of real estate. It takes up a ton of real estate, and you know what? It might pull people away from you know putting their email in. They might say, "All right, I'm not going to put my email in. I'm going to like them on Facebook instead." You know, so I might try to figure out how to detract from that just a little bit. Okay. Would you would you move that bio up then? Put the bio right right at the top, and then yes, it's sort I of think middle the bio, of the page. 
I think that's a real key thing, part like a re real key part of your website. Usually, I don't like personal bios, but you are very intertwined with your brand, and I think it works for you. You know what I mean? Like, there's other people where you write most of your content, like someone like Copy Blogger. They don't really need a bio in their sidebar because they're always featuring guest writers. Yeah, it's not just about Brian. Yeah, exactly. So, whereas with you, you are, you know, this. You mainly publish all of your own content, I think, right? Uh, about two thirds, at least two thirds or three quarters, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, you have some guest posters, but it makes sense to put your bio front and center. Okay. Um, what are those two things below? Uh, social media, the get the white paper and build web forms. Uh, S sponsors, yeah. Okay, so those are those are paid advertising. You yep. can't do anything about that. I mean, I can I can move them around in the sidebar somewhere, but but they need to be in the sidebar, yeah. Formstack and Argyle Social. Cool, cool. Social media speaker. Those are all of your upcoming events. Do you think you need to show all of the upcoming events or maybe minimize? I mean, you've heard of the Drager Jam experiment by Sheena Eingar? Yeah. You know, where she had the study. For, for those who haven't, she did two different tests. One had uh, 24 jams on display, another had six jams on display. Right. The, si the 24 jams on display attracted more people but converted less sales than the six jams on display. You know, so it didn't have as many people, but I think the number was like a thousand percent more sales on yeah. the six jam display compared to the 24. Yep. So with this, I would recommend only showing, you know, maybe five or six upcoming speaking gigs. Now, like maybe five or six of the newest upcoming speaking gigs, and then click here for more, where you can manage all of the upcoming speaking. Okay. Gigs. Yeah, because it does get to it does end up taking a lot of, a lot of space. Yeah, it takes a, a, a ton of space. Now, the other thing is the reason why I don't like that having that much space. I mean, you know, you're a speaker. You this is your business, so it makes sense for you to promote it. But a lot of people visiting your blog are not necessarily interested in your speaking gigs. Right. They're interested in how this site can help them right and that's why I think bringing something up like greatest hits is very important greatest hits needs to stay there that we need to get that higher on the screen and I think as we shorten up the speaking we get rid of the Facebook yep. like box that'll help get that higher what do you phone. think about uh, what do you think about categories I mean obviously it doesn't take up a lot of space because we have it as a pull down here uh, and I don't have I don't have a, any tracking code I just wonder if people if people use that very much, but but that's that's because I don't have archives or anything else by date. That's the only way people can go can can find other posts other than clicking on a, a tag or or you know going next page next page next page. Exactly. So uh, I like the categories, but I don't like them because I know nobody looks at them. Right. I mean, I, I I've run tons of sites. I've ran sites that got were getting you know over a hundred thousand people a day. And I had a listing of categories, not a drop down like that, where I would only show like ten categories. Yeah. And they still would get no clicks. Yeah. The yeah. main people who hit category pages are people like you know usually Google searchers. Right. So I wouldn't even show them. I think the content buckets are going to be how people find your best stuff because you know you write some good stuff here and there, but you don't always write the best content. No one writes the best content all the time, and. Those buckets allow you to promote your best stuff. Yeah, so sort of like what we have here for greatest hits, but but greatest hits topically as opposed to great. Right now, right now, greatest hits don't relate to one another other than they are the posts that I either like the best and or got the most traffic and or uh, in most cases are are relatively evergreen. Like there's some other posts that I've written that are really popular that I don't have in this greatest hits list because they don't necessarily make sense now. It made sense two years ago when I wrote it. So. I, I used yeah. to actually do this, like a lot of bloggers do, automatically, where it would yeah. pull you know the ones with the most comments or the most traffic into that list. But then I ended up changing it to be a manual edition, just so that it, it wasn't you know here's something that doesn't really make sense any, anymore, and it you know is right at the top of this list. Yeah, makes makes sense. You know, I think hand selecting it is always better. I hand select mine usually too. So I would get rid of categories. Okay. So get rid of categories, shorten up the speaking profile area. Yep. And the last part is search this website. This is an interesting thing that I've been talking to people about. And here's another thing that, that I've tested on a few different sites. I know there's always one or two people that complain about like my site, Social Triggers, for not having a search feature. But in my experience, I have never never seen people visiting search pages in my life. Like, you know, I had, like I said, I had one site doing over 100,000 people a day. I had a search bar all the way at the top of my bar, right at the top of the sidebar, 
above my opt-in form and nobody ever used it. Yeah. So the people who usually use the search bar the most are the bloggers. Yeah, I use it all the time. You use the search all the bar. All the time. All the time because I'm trying to – I'm like I remember I want to link to a post that I wrote before and I can't remember what it was called. But I remember what it was about, and so I, you know, just type the keywords into the search box, and I find it that way. But I could obviously do that behind the scenes in WordPress. Yeah. So I mean, this could be very, you know, you have a different audience. Also, you have a, you, you tend to attract more businesses as opposed to independent people. I would think, right? Yeah. yeah. And maybe they're used to seeing a search bar. So I would take a look at your analytics, and you know how WordPress adds a adds a little parameter at the back of the URL for search, a question mark S. Yep. You should be able to see if people are using the question mark S function. Yeah, I haven't actually really looked at that in a long time, so I'll do that. Yeah, so that's, I'll definitely take a look to see if people are doing that. Great. If people aren't doing it, get rid of it. All right, now, you, at the top, you have an RSS icon a LinkedIn icon, a Google Plus icon, and then a follow J Bear icon. Now the one thing I'm concerned with is that it's very, very close to your email opt-in form. And what I would do just to kind of, because right now you don't want to detract people from giving you their email. Right. And something that I've experimented with and has worked really well is putting a little quote or testimonial right below your opt-in form in your sidebar. Okay. That'll serve two purposes in your case. One, it'll get those icons lower down the page and get people focusing on the email list. And two, it'll help reassure people that this is a good thing to sign up for. Like on my site, Social Triggers, I've got a little quote from uh, Chris Brogan saying, I'm totally loving Social Triggers. And Ever since I've included that quote there, it is, you know, I have people referencing that quote as the reason why they subscribe to my email list. So I'll definitely consider putting a quote there from a well known person or someone else that, you know, who's, who's, who has a bigger audience than you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're already kind of a big deal since you're I don't, know, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> So, I mean, you, could, you know what? That would actually be kind of funny. I totally love my blog, Jay Bear. Yeah. I, totally <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> so would you? One of the things I've thought about in the past, because I do have the two different email uh, options, right? One for the blog posts and then one for the newsletter. I've thought about having those two sign-up forms kind of next to each other. or like, As you can see, I, you can't sign up for the email newsletter on the sidebar. I used to have a, an ad for the email newsletter here, uh, where I have sponsors presently, but because I have two sponsors, I don't I don't want to have like a whole crazy array of of ads there. I think it just creates banner blindness. So uh, I've thought about having okay, you know, very distinct boxes. Get blog posts by email here. Get the newsletter here. Truthfully, I mean, I wouldn't even promote your RSS feed. I mean, get figure blog posts by anybody, email. Yeah, go ahead. Get blog posts by email is nice and all, but you know. I've never had success with, with that. I, I know there's a lot of people who are pro RSS, but your, your clients, the people who are going to pay you probably aren't using RSS. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? So like on social triggers, I get complaints all the time. They're like, Derek, you've got no RSS icon. And, I'm, and I keep telling everyone the same thing. If people are really RSS readers, they know to go to their RSS reader and press add subscription and type the URL in, you know? Yeah. They Whereas, can figure it out. I only promote my email list because in the end, the email is what gets the response. Yeah. I mean, I got almost 10,000 emails on my list and I open that up and I'll, I'll get something like a 70% open rate. I could see the clicks happening. Yeah. Whereas when I was promoting RSS and I was having, you know, I still have a few thousand RSS readers. Right. And I noticed that, you know, how FeedBurner attaches the parameter at the back of the URL. Right. I noticed, I very rarely notice any, uh, referral traffic from that particular link. So what I what I found is that a significant percentage of my overall RSS subscribers are via email. Um, you know, partially because of probably the way I have this set up, but it's, you know, I don't know whatever I have, 15,000 RSS subscribers total, and of that 15,000 like 45 or 50% of them are through email as opposed to through a reader. Yeah, so I think having a the best way to do this is I, I love what Copy Logger does where he promotes the email and then has an RSS link below it where they know to click it but they don't really over promote it. Yeah. 
And I know he uses AWeber to power his broadcast. Right. And I know you're using FeedBurner. I would consider testing out AWeber for blog broadcast. It's a, it's an additional expense, but you really get the you know FeedBurner is very very underpowered. And yeah. if you're using AWeber, you can see open rates. You could see click rates. You could always send them exclusive stuff that you wouldn't be able to send through just the feed burner feed. Right. So, I, I I would personally use Aweber, and what I would do is I would you know have people sign up by email, get them into Aweber, they confirm their email, the welcome email, could say, look, you signed up for this. I want to let you know I also got the three two one newsletter, and then you could get the people who subscribe to RSS on your newsletter too. And they could do it the other way around, right? If somebody signs up for the three two one. Then in that confirmation email, you say, "Hey, you know, why don't you get blog posts every day?" Exactly, exactly. Now, I I know you're using Exact Target. I don't know if they have blog to broadcast functionality. I recommend Aweber because they have blog broadcast, which makes it so your feed burner count doesn't get messed up, and you can still see your feed burner numbers. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing. We'll. See. That's the one thing. Now, the other thing I would consider doing is if you're going to have those social icons in that particular area, yeah. I would take it out of the blue background. You okay. know, like the blue background with the little bubbles or circles or whatever mm -hmm. those are? I would take those out of it. Make the blue circle background all about getting the email or the sign up and then put the social media icons below it outside of it. Okay. All right, cool. Now that's that for the sidebar, you know, that's about shortening the speaking thing, maybe getting rid of categories, promoting the content buckets that we talked about, bringing, potentially getting rid of search, but if people are using it, don't get rid of it, and then making the get blog post by email section all about getting blog posts by email. Got it. Let's take a look at your hype-free social media consultant. Let's talk about the user experience for a second. Okay. If someone gets the idea to click on Hype Free Social Media Consultant, you would assume that they're interested in Hype Free Social Media Consulting, right? You would think so. So I would get rid of the sidebar on this page because nothing in the sidebar helps them, you know, with the Hype Free Social Media Consultant. So I would just get rid of the sidebar there. I would also get rid of the plus one button, the tweet button, the yeah. LinkedIn share button, and the like button. Yeah, there. that's actually not. Yeah, I, that was just a mistake. I added that back in when I changed this page recently. Okay. Yeah, so don't have those there. And the reason why, just for people listening, you don't ever want to show social media icons like that if they don't have any numbers on them. Right. That's negative social proof. If they see no negative, like if, if they come here, hype free social media consulting, they'll be like, oh, sure is hype free. There's no shares, you know? <laughs> so definitely, yeah. Buttons. Yeah. Same thing with comments, right? Like, like I'm not a big proponent of having comments on these kind of pages either, which I don't, but. Oh, yeah, no comments. But I've seen people do that. A lot of bloggers do have comments even on their inside pages, and I don't, I don't really get that. Yeah, yeah, don't have comments on this page. It's smart. I've never even thought about taking the sidebar off. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and what I would do is if you're going to take the sidebar, if you could actually replace it with a new sidebar, put a testimonial there. Right. Put a call to action button. Maybe put a testimonial call to action button or something along those yeah. lines. Okay. You could, you, you could use that sidebar to help your main goal of selling the hype-free social media consultant. Yeah, because otherwise it gets, to be a pretty, uh, it gets to be a really long line of copy if you, were just, if you just stretch it all the way across. You know, it gets uncomfortable for the eye if it's that long of a sentence. Exactly. And I know you got contact us for a free fact finding consultation. Yep. Six oh two, etc. Yep. That's I would put that right at the top. Okay. Now here's the issue that's gonna happen when you do that. You're gonna get a lot of calls of untargeted people. Yep. That might not necessarily be able to hire you. But if you have systems in place where that you can weed those people out, that'll be good. One of the things that I tend to do if I was someone consulting, is to create a form like name, first name, second name. Yep. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Phone number, and yep. then make submit the form that way. As opposed to just the email, yeah. As opposed to just emailing you, or you know, it'll help weed out some of the people that aren't really equipped to pay you. One of the other things I I did until relatively recently is I actually had pricing on this page. Okay. And I said here's now, here's what it costs to 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 have. Convince and convert. Do a social media strategic plan. 
for you or a social media audit. I took it off just because I felt like maybe it was a little bit, I don't know, just a little bit presumptuous or in your face. Uh, I'm just, I'm still kind of unsure about it one way or the other. So pricing served two different, two different things. One, it weeds out people that can't afford you. But two, there's some people who will see what you're pricing something at and their expectations are greater than what that price entails. Sure, right. Which is why I tend to, you know, I, I like the idea of price on the page, but you don't want, you want to get people's expectations in line. Maybe having something along the lines of consult, consulting starts at X dollars. Yeah. Just something. to kind of put a bottom on the level where you could know that people who have less than that won't contact you. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Good. So you don't have to have an exact price. Okay. Now let's talk about this page. How many different services do you offer? Um, Score, scoreboards, social media? Approximately apps. seven. All right, so here's what would I, I'd love to see this on this site, and I think it'd be really, really cool. Get rid of the sidebar and put a new sidebar in place. In this new sidebar in place, you have uh, consulting options and list the seven things. It's actually called the Johnson box in direct marketing. Where you have just people hit a page, they kind of see a bullet. Should I ask you why it's called the Johnson box? I actually don't know why they call right. it the Johnson Somebody box. Somebody who's watching this, look it up, put it in a comment. Whoever can tell us credibly why it's called the Johnson box first in the comments gets a free copy of my book. <laughs> cool. All right. So, that, I mean, that's good. I mean, I, I can't wait to hear why it's called the Johnson box, too. So, it's called the Johnson box. You get the little bullets at the right, and you can make those uh, anchor links where they click it, and it'll jump down to the page where that particular service is being pitched. Okay, so, so the sidebar has got the links and then it anchors to the middle, you know, to the main content window to the appropriate place. Exactly, okay. yeah, I, I think it's easy to set up. I don't know how to do it, but I'm pretty sure it's an easy thing to do. Okay. So get a Johnson box with your seven consultings. Below that, you can put a testimonial and then maybe below that, you could have a, a client intake, like, you know, call me for consulting and if, you notice you're getting a lot of untargeted people or people who can't pay you. I would then, instead of putting your phone number there, make them click a button that takes them to a client intake form where they yeah. can fill out some more information. Got it. Perfect. So that's for the hype free social media consulting. Great. Let's take a look at free social media tools. I'm betting this gets a lot of clicks on your it, site. It does get quite a few clicks. This page is kind of a mess. Um, I haven't paid a lot of attention to it lately. I've been working on other things and it's it's definitely one that I need to um, kind of tidy up for sure. Okay, hold on. Let me take a look here. All right. So, again, I think this page needs to get rid of the sidebar and I think it'd be really cool just to have a Johnson box again to the right, yep. just showing people what tools are here. They see it, they click, it jumps, you know? Yep. It kind of just makes it so... There's something I call the header removal test where if you take off your header and your tagline, can people figure out what this page is all about without use, you know, without looking at anything else yep. other than your header and tagline? When you have those Johnson boxes at the top, especially in this situation, it works great for you. People will be able to see what's on this page without scrolling anywhere. Yep. You know, and that that's just great stuff, and I think it's going to work great for this page also. Okay. Let's take a look at your about page. All right, so the point of the about page here, I'm just waiting for it to load right now. Yeah, me too. It's being kind of weird. Yeah, so anyway, let's talk about about pages for a second. On blogs, about pages tend to be one of the most popular and most well-visited pages on a site. It's just the way it is. I think people visit sites and they want to know what's behind that site Yep. almost all the time. So... What you want to do is, even though people want to know all about you, they don't really care who you are. They uh, ouch, to, you're killing me. They still want to know what you can do for them. Yeah. And I tend to use a simple about page formula. It has worked really, really well for me. And it was just simply a short little, you know, maybe two paragraphs yep. just talking about what this website can do for you. Okay. And then you can jump into your traditional about page. Okay. Now, there's one more thing I want you to do on this on this page. Again, get rid of the sidebars. I yep. don't think having sidebars on this page is useful. 
but it would be great to incorporate opt-in forms where they make sense. So, you know, the high free social media thought leader, one of America's top three social media consultants, opt-in form, successful author, keynote speaker, you could maybe link to your speaking page or right. something, the button, make the button pop. Right now you're using a text link of, yep. please visit my speaking site. I think you should make that call to action pop. Okay. So we'll see there just pops into their face. Got it. So I would just sprinkle calls to action on your about page. Okay. With my particular area, I tend to sprinkle opt-in forms because my business is all about growing email lists. I need yep. emails. Okay. With you, I think you could take a little mixed approach where you'll have opt-in forms and you can have maybe consulting page, link to your consulting page, link to your speaking page. You can kind of take different calls to action after each section of content. All right? Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Let's take a look now at your single post blog post. This is another thing that a lot of people tend to have a ton of opportunities for. Uh, I'll just go to I'll go to the second one down because the one that I wrote. Um, five reasons social media measurement is making you lie to yourself. Okay, cool. So let's take a look here. When someone visits blog posts, they read and they actually read it. They get to the bottom of the blog post. Yep. Let's think about user behavior for a second. If someone actually reads your blog post to the end. And this isn't a particular, this is a long one too, so even more so. Yeah. If someone reads this post to the end, yep. there's one thing that they want to do next. They're always going to be thinking, what can I do next? You know, they just finished it. They care about you enough to actually read your content, which almost never happens. But if they get there and they get to the bottom of that post, they want to know, what can I do next? I always have an email sign-up form right after the blog post ends. Okay. And it's just a great place to convert some more emails into your list. Yeah, we've, now, got, we've got the link, but you think it should be a form. Yeah, no, no, no. You put a form right there above your advertisement for Genesis just to get the email. Now, okay. if, you're, if your main goal after people reading a blog post is to get people to buy Genesis, that's a good place to have it. But I'm not sure if that's a targeted call to action. You know, that's not a... Yeah, not, everybody's, not everybody is in the theme purchasing business. Exactly. Yeah. I think most of your, your readers are not necessarily going to be there. And which no. why I, I put the email first, Genesis ad next. Mm -hmm. I know you have filed under social media measurement, top 10. Mm -hmm. I, do you see those people like, do those get traffic? Like what happens with that? I tend to think, I mean, are people clicking that? Uh, I don't. No, not really. If they're not, I would get rid of that. I would just, I would do, I would create an archive page where you have your different archives and your categories on yep. like a separate page. And yep. that way you could kind of have like an HTML site map for your site and people could find your content. Yep. But yep. I don't know if it's important to have that. Okay. Personally, I don't even use categories or tags almost ever. I just, I only create content buckets. Right. You know, and some articles are harder to find, but it, it just works really well for, you know, just the overall goal of the site again, you know? Okay. Now let's take a look. You get a lot of comments on your posts. Here's another idea. Quite a few, yeah. If, if people make it to the bottom of your comments, that means they like your site, right? You've got adage, Power 150, you've got Top 50 Blogs, Evan Carmichael, you got a lot of cool awards there. I would put an opt-in form. I would get rid of one of those awards. I don't know which award. But I would try to work an opt-in form into that footer. It's a good idea. Just because if people are making it all the way down there, might as well ask them to do something, you know? Yeah. That's like, you know, the whole part of converting people is asking people to do stuff. Yeah, smart. Okay. Cool. Now, let's take a look at your newsletter page. Okay. You can just this, flip over that. There we go. Again, get rid of the sidebar. Yep. And I would take some time explaining your offer. I know, you know, you could test this. Some people say shorter copy converts better. Other people say longer copy will convert better. I think you should, I think you should consider bolstering this out a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm actually what? testing it right now. We're doing a, we're doing an A, B, C, D, E test uh, five weeks in a row on our Facebook tab. So our Facebook default landing tab talks about this newsletter, and we're doing one um, that's just get the email kind of like this one, one that's got a testimonial, one that has a video from me saying, hey, you should get it, it's awesome, 
uh, to, to test all those different uh, options. And then whichever one works there, we'll, we'll incorporate it back into here. Cool, cool. I think that's a good idea. The one thing I actually have tested myself on Facebook, I actually got this from uh, Glenn Alsop from Vibership, mm -hmm. where when someone visits your page, they press like, they yeah. get taken to another page. Right. I tend to get them the, the first page they visit is about getting the like. Mm -hmm. Press like, they get redirected to another page, which is about getting the email. I like that two-step process because, I mean, you're familiar with Cialdini, right? Mm -hmm. So he has something called people like to remain consistent with what they are currently in the process of doing. If people press like, you could, and they, you redirect them to another page. Thank you for liking my page, but you'll also love my newsletter. Right. And put an opt-in form. It's a two-step process. Getting people to like is a small commitment. Getting people to give an email is a bigger commitment. Yep. I've noticed that making that a two-step process has worked really, really well for me. Because it gets people to take a little small commitment than saying, you like me, but you'll love this. Yep. Smart. And it kind of gets them into a targeted call to action. Great. Cool. So that's just, that's a, regarding Facebook. That's a little off topic. No, it makes sense though. Yep. All right. So let's take one more look at, this is something that you also might want to see, but you know, people... Over the last few years, for some reason, people make buttons that don't feel like buttons. I mean, you've got the go button, you've got right. the click continue button, but if you highlight, highlight it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like it works like a button at all. Right. So I think maybe just getting a hover feature on those buttons okay. to let people know that it's a button, I think helps increase interactivity on buttons themselves. Good. Okay. All right. Now... Another thing that I think would work really well here is you're trying to sell your book and you've got buy now in the top right of the yep. page. How is that going? Um, do you track that? Uh, I do not track the link from this uh, spot. I, I've got the links tracked from the site, but not from that location. I probably need to put a, a redirect on that. Yeah, I would, I would take a look and try and see what's going on with that particular button. Because, you know, you don't want to be too salesy, but if someone visits your site, it's like, hi, I'm Jay Bear, buy now. You know, that's like the first thing they say. And I think having it there is good. I think showing your book is really, it's a real big credibility builder. But I would just see if people are clicking it or not. And okay. if people aren't clicking it, you could simply, instead of making that say buy now. Just talk about the book, yeah. No, you could say learn more and then link to a page where you talk about your book. Okay. And now it's not a call to action. It's a... It's a two-step process. Right. Okay. So that's another thing. Got it. Now. I think we have it the same way at the bottom of the post, too, don't we? Uh, we talk about order uh, in the bottom of the blog post, too. Yeah, where it says buy now. So I'm going change that, too. Yeah, maybe you could try buy now or order. I think buy now at the bottom of the post might work a little bit better than buy now at the top of the page. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know? Yep. I think that's a little, you know, because people already read the concept. They get there. They like you, so they're okay. more likely to care. All right. Now, let's talk about one more thing, and this will be the last opportunity. And it's about highlighting positive social proof where it matters. Okay. Now, for your site, you happen to have a very well-trafficked site. You've got a lot of comments. You've got a lot of uh, Twitter followers. You've got... The Facebook wants to get rid of that stuff because that's new. That's 714 people, and there's a lot of good positive features just bombarding people when they visit. You know, it, it, it just screams authority. The one thing I would think of doing is trying to figure out what makes you look like the biggest authority and over-promote that. And right now, I think the thing that's most impressive to me is, I mean, you have a large Twitter following, which is good, but you said you have 15,000 RSS readers, you said? Uh, yeah, something like that. Have you ever seen how Darren Rouse combines all of his followers on ProBlogger into, like, you know, here's the Twitter followers plus FeedBurner plus right. Facebook? Right. I think you'd consider trying that out. You know, it, it, it's a bigger number and it looks better. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's about, you know, just trying to, you don't want to make yourself appear bigger than you are, I guess, and that could be, you know, that could be a little, that could be negative, but 
try to promote the numbers that make you show that you know what you're talking about. Maybe it's not numbers. Maybe it's a good quote like we talked about earlier. Maybe okay. a good quote from a good person is good enough. Yep. I don't social triggers. I don't have any numbers anywhere other than two things. I have a quote from Chris Brogan, who is well-respected in the social media space. And I don't show, I mean, even though I got like about 10,000 people on my list, I don't show that number anywhere. Right. And I overpromote the fact that my comments are usually between, you know, 90 and 100 somewhat comments on my site. Yeah. And I make that number really big because when people go there, they're like, whoa, this guy's got 100 comments and Chris Brogan is saying this about it. It must be good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So think about what makes sense for your audience. I don't know what it is. You probably have a better feel for that. Okay. You, how your people react and just try to over promote that one thing. I mean, I would say, even though it's a little bit, I am not a big believer in this metric and success metric, but, but I would say uh, there's other blogs out there that get more comments than this one. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But, but I would say, you know, with the exception of Brian Solis and Brogan and a few other people, I probably get as, as, as many or more tweets on, on posts than, than almost anybody, right? This post I'm looking at now you know, it's 825 tweets, which is, you know, a lot. Um, and that's that's more than I usually get, but but I usually get several hundred for every yeah. post. You know what? That's that's a great idea. You know what I would do there? I would do something similar to what Copy Blogger has, where right below the click to continue button, you have the big buttons. The big right. Shit. Instead of putting it right under the headline, put it right there instead on your homepage. Right. And people will get the homepage, they'll see, well, 250 tweets on this article, yeah. and that's good. I yeah, like we it. actually, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that. We actually changed that. When we when we put this theme together, um, you know, we, we used to be able to have um, those social proof numbers on all the posts. Now it's only on the first two, um, and when you get to the third and beyond, they're not there anymore because of the layout, so we probably should uh, should put that back. Yeah, right under the click to continue button, like Copy Blogger works great. Yeah, and actually, I, the, the irony is the guys at Copy Blogger built this site for me, um, which is kind of funny. So you see a lot of, a lot of their kind of you know things that they believe in are built into this theme because they did the design on this site for me. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, the site's a really good design. It's a really good design. It's great. It, it's it's already geared to convert. There's just some improvement opportunities. Yeah, like, no question, yeah. no question, and and uh, I mean, all of this stuff is. Is doable. Nothing in here is hard at all, right? I mean, I yeah, could, yeah, I could, yeah. I could do all of this in a day, um, you know. So that's awesome. The other thing is, uh, I don't know if you've seen my site. On my single post, yeah. what I do is I put my. I tend to have a high share rate on a lot of my articles mm -hmm. too. So I have it outside of my layout to the left. Right now, I like it there because I assume that most people, like you know, most of my traffic hits my site via browsers. But you actually can't see that on mobile devices. Right. Do you? I'm going to go uh, go to the site real quick. Do you um, have the one that that actually follows? Um, you know what I'm talking about? That's like the new thing yeah. where people have it and it follows you down the page as you scroll. Um, yeah. It, it has well, the social. My first article. My first article doesn't have uh, a lot of tweets. It's like the second one. If you click on that, that's got 451 tweets or. 224. It doesn't follow because I don't have a plugin. Right. I try to avoid using plugins at all costs. Mainly because I don't know the plugin developers. I like right, to just, right. you know, I, I use Thesis and I use uh, everything, else, and I use W3 Total Cash for my for my caching, and I think that's it for plugins. Yeah. And I have that hard coded in. How uh, how's your how's your pop up working for your email newsletter? All right, so that's funny that you mentioned that. I just added that in on Monday. It's only converting at about five percent, and I'm noticing that my traffic dipped as soon as I added it. Yeah. So even though I added that pop-up in, it's probably going to be coming out now. Because even though, like I said, it was, you know, social triggers, I just started growing this site in the last few months. And the pop-up was getting me some emails, but it was at the expense of people commenting and sharing my content. Right. So you figure it's not worth it. You'll get, them, you'll get the email address eventually some other way. Yeah. So I actually saw it. I tracked out my blog, my blog emails, first yeah. my pop-up emails. And I actually saw my pop-up emails generating, you know, maybe an extra 15 emails. Or 25 emails mm -hmm. a day, and I actually saw the sidebar drop by about like 10 emails a day. So it was just gathering maybe an extra five people into my right. list that I was that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. The one thing that you might want to do is I know on my homepage I have that feature box. Do you see mm -hmm. that where you know it makes people tick online? Yes. That yes. thing converts at about between six and ten percent regularly. Wow. All it is is just a little, you know, right but here. my main goal of this site is get emails. Yep. This thing converts between 6 and 10%, and 
I'll, you know, I'll never, I recommend everyone use this. If you're running a blog and you're trying to get traffic and build emails, this needs to be on every site. Nice. And only make it show on the home page. And the reason why that happens, again, is because if you're running a content-based site, most of your traffic will hit your content pages. After they get to your content page, they either click your about page or your home page next. That's just how it usually works. And having that call to action right there on the home page is aggressive, but it's okay because most people are hitting your site through content pages. They click home, then they're seeing that box. Right, yeah. It's amazing on, on blogs how how rarely people actually see your home page as their first page. Exactly. I mean, it's that, it's, it's thirty percent or less in most cases. Exactly. I mean, I, I saw that with uh, I, like I said, I had I had some sites doing a hundred thousand people, you know, millions of people a month, and I noticed all of my traffic was hitting my single post pages. Yep. And before I re had that realization, I would always design sites. Here's my home page to highlight right. all my content. But once you realize that all your content hits your single pages, that's really your home page. Yeah. Every page is a, every page is your home page. Exactly. Ultimately. Exactly. This is awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. I think there's some amazingly uh, good things here that, that are relatively easy to execute on. Um, and it just goes to show you people out there, uh, if, if, I've, if I'm doing this many things wrong or these many opportunities not capitalized upon, uh, think how many that you might be doing because I actually kind of do this for a living. And, uh, and you see uh, how smart Derek is. Absolutely recommend you check out socialtriggers.com. Get Derek's email. He's been talking about uh, chock full of really interesting ideas like this kind of stuff. Uh, and make sure you check back and see how many of these things I, uh, I put into practice. Cool. Hey, thanks for having me, Jay. My pleasure. Thank you very much for taking the time. This is great. I'll see you later. See you.